But we begin with a report from the ABC 15 investigators. Our team obtaining a copy of a newly filed lawsuit related to a Phoenix fire truck crash that killed a young couple and their newborn son nearly five years ago. The lawsuit includes the first public allegation the driver of that fire truck was under the influence at the time of the crash. ABC 15 senior investigator Melissa Blazius has followed this investigation since the beginning. She has the latest details and where that firefighter is now. Melissa. Javier, we confirmed today that the fire truck driver is still a fire engineer in Phoenix and his job description includes driving fire engines. Now, while the initial police investigation in this case found it was the other driver who caused the fatal crash, this lawsuit says people close to that firefighter have said that not only was he driving too fast that day, but that he had used alcohol and or drugs late the night before the crash. Surveillance cameras captured fire truck 18 on a Sunday morning in April 2019. Lights and sirens. Police reports said the truck was going up to 69 miles an hour in a 40 mile per hour zone just before hitting this pickup. Made it. Made it, made it, made it. The pickup driver, 20 year old Kenneth Collins, his girlfriend and their three month old son all died. We have a major emergency on a fire truck flipped over. Oh my God, the truck okay. rolled, both vehicles, they're bad. A small little pickup got right in front of the fire truck and just mashed it up. The driver of that rolled fire truck, Paul Kalkbrenner. The driver got out and said the guy just jumped out from me from the middle of nowhere and I tried to avoid him. Kalkbrenner is from a well-connected Phoenix firefighting family. His aunt, Kara Kalkbrenner, was fire chief at the time of the crash. Paul Kalkbrenner was temporarily suspended for driving too fast and the city paid out a three million dollar settlement in one legal claim related to the accident. But there's a new lawsuit filed this week on behalf of Kenneth Collins' daughter. It alleges that it was not just speed that contributed to the crash. The lawsuit alleges the Phoenix Fire Department negligently entrusted a fire truck to a man with a substance abuse issue. The lawsuit contains a text message purportedly from Paul Kalkbrenner two years before the crash saying he was called in for a partial OT shift after having a few cocktails but shh, don't tell anyone because it was easy money. There's also a sworn affidavit from Paul Kalkbrenner's now ex-wife. She's a Valley police officer saying that she saw Paul at 11.30 p.m. less than 10 hours before the crash and he was extremely intoxicated with bloodshot watery eyes and there was an empty bottle of Tito's vodka. And then the day after the crash at the hospital, the ex-wife said she was in the room when a social worker told Paul his test was positive for alcohol and offered him services, but Paul refused. The now ex-wife said another firefighter in the hospital apologized to her for providing Paul with edible gummies that Paul had recently taken. So why is all this just coming to light now? Because physical evidence that could have proved or disproved these allegations was never gathered by the fire department nor Phoenix police. Criminal investigators did not conduct field sobriety tests, blood draws, or breathalyzer tests on Kalkbrenner the day of the crash. Their report also did not include any results from blood tests performed by hospital staff. When we reached out for comment, a firefighter union representative told us that Kalkbrenner has no interest in speaking to the media. And the fire department also refused comment on our questions about both Paul Kalkbrenner and firefighter drug testing, citing the pending lawsuit.